Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mel, and welcome back to Mel Guy Game, where I bring you top plays, top sports news, and breakdowns of the previous week. So if that interests you, please like, comment, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Well, guys, the time has finally come. The moment we have all been waiting for is finally here. And that moment is none other than the NFL playoffs. All of the matchups for the NFC and AFC playoffs are officially set going into this wildcard weekend. And I'm going to tell you right now, we have a load of good games that you really do not want to miss. We have two games on Saturday, three games on Sunday, and then another one on Monday. Having this wildcard weekend span over three days. And for all three of those days, I am not moving. I'm going to be glued to my chair unless I have to get up to use the bathroom or I'm just very starving and I got to go eat. And as always, everyone who is a fan of the National Football League is giving out their own opinions, their own predictions, who they think is going to upset, who they think has the best odds to make it to the Super Bowl, what players they think are going to have the best postseason for their teams. Just a whole wide array of different perspectives from everybody watching football right now. And today in this video, we're going to do exactly that. Now for this particular video, I'm just going to be focusing on wildcard weekend and giving my predictions of who I think is going to move on to the divisional round. So with that being said, that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and check out some of these matchups. Also, before we get started, I do want to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed right now. We're at 300 subscribers we just hit it not too long ago so i just want to thank everybody for helping me get to this point i want to grow my channel as big as possible as i can in 2023 this is only the beginning it's not stopping here i just want to say i appreciate all of you guys who are watching my videos and who are subscribed right now who are commenting interacting on my channel really means a lot and it helps me get into the algorithm you know what i mean so uh just thank you and you know i'm gonna just i'm gonna stop talking let's go ahead and get into these matchups okay all right guys so i'm going to quickly list all of the matchups that we have for this wild card weekend in the nfc first we got the seattle seahawks the number seven seed against the san francisco 49ers then we have the new york giants the number six seed against the third seeded minnesota vikings and then we have the number fifth seeded dallas cowboys against the number four seeded tampa bay buccaneers next in the afc we got the seven seeded miami dolphins against their division rivals the buffalo bills at the number two seed next we got another division matchup with the six seeded baltimore ravens against the third seeded cincinnati Bengals. then finally we have the fifth seeded los angeles chargers against the four seeded jacksonville jack Jaguars. So starting in the NFC, we have the seven-seeded Seattle Seahawks against their division rivals, the number two-seeded San Francisco 49ers. Now, obviously, since these teams are division rivals, they played each other twice in the regular season. And in the regular season, the 49ers swept the Seahawks, beating them once in week two, 27 to seven. And the second time around, they beat them 21 to 13 in week 15. And oddly enough, they beat them with two different quarterbacks. In their first matchup, they had the veteran Jimmy Garoppolo. But then after losing him for the season, the last pick in the NFL draft brought Purdy took over in their second matchup as he looked very comfortable going up against that Seattle Seahawks defense as he threw for 217 yards and two touchdowns. Now in this matchup Brock Purdy will once again be starting and he will be tasked with outplaying the veteran Geno Smith once again who has also had a phenomenal season. And despite the Seahawks being 9-8 and and the 49ers being 13-4, the Niners are only favored by 10 points, which isn't a whole lot when you think of the 2 seed going up against the 7 seed in the playoffs. And just like the experts, I think this will be a very close game as well. The 49ers have the best defense in the league as they're surrendering the least amount of points across all teams, with 16.3 points a game, while the Seahawks are surrendering about a touchdown more with 23.6 points a game. And earlier in the year, the Seahawks were very strong and they were looking like they were going to take the West. And over time, the 49ers kind of peaked there head through and kind of gave the Seahawks some competition and they emerged as the best team in that division. But for this game, I think the Seahawks are going to upset the 49ers. I feel like Geno Smith's leadership and his many years of NFL experience is going to outshine the 49ers defense and Brock Purdy. And I still think it's going to be a very close game, but I think I have the Seahawks winning 27 to 23. Now moving on to our second matchup, we got the sixth seeded New York Giants against the third seeded Minnesota Vikings. This game is a little bit interesting. I've heard a couple experts saying that they think the New York Giants are going to actually upset the Minnesota Vikings. And these two teams actually met just a few weeks ago, where the Minnesota Vikings beat the New York Giants 27 to 24. And in that game, it was pretty neck and neck until the fourth quarter. And then the Minnesota Vikings kind of found their rhythm on offense and created some separation. And if that game was any indication about how this wildcard playoff matchup is going to go down, we are probably in for a really good game. Now for the season, the Vikings finished 13 and four, and the New York Giants had their best season in a long time with a nine, seven and one record, giving them their first playoff appearance since 2016. But the Vikings, however, rely mostly on their offense as their defense is in the bottom five in the league. 
as they rank number 31st in defense. And for their offense, they rank number 7th among all teams, while also having a top 5 team in terms of passing the ball, largely due to the fact that Justin Jefferson is the most reliable target that Kirk Cousins has ever had in his career. Now, being that the Vikings have such a good offense, they're only projected to win by 3 points against the Giants, which is very shocking considering the season that the Vikings had in terms of scoring the ball. And even though their first matchup was a lot closer, I think the Vikings will win it this time by a larger margin. Not by nothing crazy or anything, but I do think they'll win by at least two possessions, whether that be in a touchdown and a field goal or two touchdowns. Given that the Giants are such an inexperienced team in terms of playoffs right now, Kirk Cousins has been here time and time again. I think the Vikings truly have the edge in this one. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the Vikings will pull it out 24 to 10. Lastly, in the NFC, we got the fifth seeded Dallas Cowboys against the fourth seeded Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now the Cowboys clinched a wild card spot with a 12 and 5 record, but even though they are a wild card team, they are one of the better teams in the NFC as they were competing in the best division in football this year with the Eagles, Giants, and Commanders all in the NFC East. And the Cowboys put up a fight for that first spot in the East, but ultimately the Eagles came out on top with the 14 and 3 record and that first round bye. Now on the other hand, the Buccaneers coming to the playoffs with an 8 and nine record as they clinched their division having won the nfc south which was the worst division in football this year and even though they clinched the buccaneers did not look like themselves for the entire year their defense was pretty solid as they had a top 10 pass defense and a top 15 rush defense but their offense struggled all season and it's probably one of the worst offenses that tom brady has been a part of as they were in the bottom 10 in the league for scoring. Now the Cowboys offense and defense are both in the top 15. And they proved to be a very strong team in the regular season. But recently the Cowboys have proven that they have a hard time taking that regular season success and translating it into the playoffs. In two of their last three playoff appearances, they didn't make it past their first game. But they're definitely hoping to switch that up this time around. But unfortunately they will have to do so on the road considering they are a wild card team. And even though outplaying Tom Brady is a big task, but the Cowboys having one of the most dynamic rushing attacks in the league with Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott, I think that's very important that they lean on their rushing attack in this game so they can squeeze out a win. And the Cowboys are favored by two and a half points, and I'm going to have to agree that I think the Cowboys are going to win. And my prediction for this game is Cowboys 21, Buccaneers 17. Moving on to the AFC now, we have our second to last divisional matchup with the seventh seeded Miami Dolphins against the second seeded Buffalo Bills. Now, like I said, this is a divisional matchup, so they did play each other twice in the regular season. And with these two teams, they actually split their season series, with both being very close games. But the Miami Dolphins beating the Buffalo Bills in week 3, 21 to 19, and the Buffalo Bills then winning in week 15, 32 to 29. And with both of their previous matchups coming right down to the wire, it's very likely that we will see a very good game once again. And both of these teams are coming out of a very competitive AFC East, with the Buffalo Bills winning the division with a 13 and 4 record, and the Miami Dolphins clinching that wild card spot with a 9 and 8 record. Now, both of these offenses are very high powered, with the Dolphins having the number 6 offense in the league, and the Bills having a top 3 offense in the league at number two and while the Dolphins defense is in the bottom 15 at number 18 the Buffalo Bills defense is in the top 10 at number six and the biggest storyline for this game is that quarterback Tua Tagovailoa is ruled out for this game and while backup Teddy Bridgewater's status is still unknown the Dolphins are getting the rookie Skylar Thompson ready to start versus the Bills and this right here alone could very well hurt the Dolphins chances of moving on to the next round and I personally think it will I think the Buffalo Bills offense is just too overpowered it's going to be very hard for the Dolphins to stop as well as keep pace in terms of scoring on their own and with that i do think the buffalo bills are going to wrap up this three game season series two to one as they beat the miami dolphins 30 to 13. For our second matchup in the AFC, we have our last divisional matchup with the sixth seeded Baltimore Ravens against the third seeded Cincinnati Bengals. Now, these two teams split their season series as well, with the Baltimore Ravens beating the Bengals in week 5, 19 to 17, and the Bengals winning in week 18, 27 to 16. Now, since that first matchup, a lot has changed. One of the biggest changes is Lamar Jackson not playing, which was a big contributor to the Ravens losing in week 18 to the Bengals. And it's definitely still going to be a big factor in this wildcard matchup, as both of Lamar's backups, Anthony Brown and Tyler Hunt, have definitely struggled in his absence and if Lamar is still ruled out for this game on Sunday the Ravens are definitely going to be in for a tough game and they're for sure going to need more than just their top 10 defense to save them because with the absence of Lamar the Ravens are already missing that make something out of nothing ability that Lamar has and without that factor it's very easy to shut down the Ravens offense unless the Ravens defense can pick off Joe Burrow three times and return all of them for touchdowns I really do not see it working out in their favor 
Now, I don't feel like it'll be a blowout per se just because the Ravens defense is pretty solid, but that offense is just not going to be able to keep up with Joe Burrow and the rest of the Bengals weapons. So with that, I think the Bengals will win 24 to 14. Now for our final matchup, we have the fifth seeded Los Angeles Chargers against the number four seeded Jacksonville Jaguars. Now the Chargers are the second AFC West team to be in the playoffs behind the Kansas City Chiefs who get the first round by. And the Chargers clinched the wild card spot with the 10 and seven record, while the Jaguars were in a neck and neck battle with the Tennessee Titans for the AFC South. That came all the way down to their week 18 matchup with the Titans, which they won. Grant to them the AFC South title and the 4C. Now, when I look across all of the matchups for a wild card weekend, I really feel like this is the most balanced. Both of these teams are almost identical. Both of these offenses are in the top 10 with the Chargers being number eight and the Jaguars being number nine. And both of their defenses are in the bottom 15 for the league with the Chargers at number 20 and the Jaguars ranking at number 24. And both teams are in the top 15 for scoring on offense with the Jaguars being number 10 and the Chargers at number 13. Now, most of the experts are saying that the Chargers will win this game and in fact they got los angeles winning by two and a half points but i for one am going to have to disagree the jacksonville jaguars are coming in as arguably the hottest team in the playoffs right now as they are on a five game winning streak with their last loss coming in week 14 as they got blown out by the detroit lions and i don't know they must have took that blowout pretty personal because like i said they haven't lost a game since and earlier in the season they went on a five game losing streak as well around the midpoint in the season the jaguars are sitting at three and six and since then they really turned their season around as trevor lawrence has truly been living up to the hype now that's not taking anything away from the los angeles Chargers as well because they're also one of the hottest teams out right now too as they finished their last five games with a four and five record to end the season with a very dynamic offense led by justin herbert but like i said i think the jacksonville jaguars are just the better team in this matchup right here but out of all the games i definitely think this is the one that's going to come down to the wire and i think whichever quarterback is going to be able to clutch it at the end for their team is going to win the game but for now i think the jacksonville jaguars are going to win and i have the final score being 28 to 24 but guys those are all the wild card matchups analyzed let me know what your predictions are for wild card weekend and which games that you're looking forward to the most for this first round of the playoffs like i said i feel like we're in for a very good wild card weekend a lot of these matchups are setting up to be very good games almost all of the teams going into this weekend really have something to prove and it's going to be fun to watch and see how it all plays out but guys that is going to do it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed please like comment and subscribe if you did enjoy and i hope you guys enjoy watching the playoffs as much as i will like i said my chair is going to be where i'm sitting all weekend long i'm not moving nobody called nobody text me none of that because i'm not picking up but yeah guys it's your boy mel stay safe i'll see you guys next time on mel guy game have a great rest of your day and i'm out peace Oh, y'all thought I was playing. I'm finna be just like this all weekend. Turn the chair around, football on, recline. Yes, sir, my boy. Yes, sir. See you again.